Now that responds well to the next one I had, which is what's wrong with people choosing who they love. I think that that covers that well. Um, love whoever you want. We're talking about who you have sex with, right? Yeah. Those two separate things. Yeah. You know, honestly, and we need to re, I, you know, we need to, I think, reignite our discourse on love because we have a lot to say about love, yeah. right? And we have a lot to say about friendship and about love in friendship. If you read Imam al-Ghazali in the Ikhya, he has a beautiful section on, you know, love among brothers. I mean, brothers and sisters in Islam, right? And what are the rights and duties of, of brothers on each other? And, you know, uh, we, again, traditionally speaking in Arab culture, particularly other Muslim cultures as well, you have much more, um, I, I would say, like friendships. Mm -hmm. And you probably noticed this when you were in the Middle East, that friendships among people of the same gender are usually much deeper than is the case in, in European culture, right? Sure. So two men who are friends in the Arab world, like they will have a much deeper emotional relationship and even physical, I don't mean sexual, but like physical contact and things like this, than is even possible or imaginable in the West. Because in the West, that would just be classified, okay, this is like, this yeah. is like a romantic, like bromance or something like this, okay? But, you know, I remember being in Egypt and you call up someone, oh, Wahashni Sultek, like even saying that, like, I right. miss hearing your voice. If you say that in English, it's like, what? You miss yeah. my voice? Like, dude, yeah. like, you oh, know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, all of the, yeah, there's a lot of waxing poetic and, uh, and these yeah, exactly. And, you know, we want to see your face, your beautiful, yeah. and all of this stuff, you know, yeah. and, just, and then again, like, again, physical you know, contact. I remember I was in a mosque here in Boston a couple of years ago, and I did a double take myself because there were two, this like in Tarawih, like uh, Tahajjud in the last 10 days of Ramadan, and there were two brothers, and, and one had his head on the other one's thigh uh -huh. lying down, and the other one had his back against the wall, and he was like petting his, right. I don't know, like it was very intimate looking. And this was like in a mosque, and I was like, Oh my God, like they brought this in the mosque, you know, like it's messy all the time, right? If you yeah. Medina, you see, you know, like, uh, and like massaging each other's legs and feet and stuff like that, like normal, but yeah, totally yeah. centralized here in the West. That would never fly at all. So, I mean, so just talking about, you know, love, and I would say I've seen it among say like males, you know, like, I think they really do like have this like love. I mean, I, I've been with groups of people, you know, for a day or two and like they leave and they're like men and they're like crying because we're so sad we're like leaving like really love these people very deeply like they like much deeper than you would normally experience again in a friendship in mm -hmm. in like a typical modern western culture that's love and the prophet peace be upon him said to one of his do you love your brother you know uh if you do then go tell him go tell him that you love him and in saying that in english again i love you but like you have to qualify it and like you know make sure that you're like a, a recognition that it had to that it was if you didn't qualify it, that it would be assumed to be some sort of sexual thing. So really? I think that, yeah, I mean, I think that, look, I was just listening to uh, something yesterday about why people become Muslim, you know, in, in the UK. Uh, and I know you did your khutbah on this yesterday, too. I actually just listened to this oh, as well, wow. inshallah. Um, and and this brother was saying, this was on uh, Muhammad Jalal, what is it called? The Thinking Muslim podcast. Yeah, he had a brother on there, a British brother who was talking about converts. And he said, people walk by the mosque, their mosque, and they see people inside hugging and kissing each other. And like, and that draws people in because they have community and people lack community. They lack basic connection with other people. Mm -hmm. So I think we really need to kind of capitalize on this. We should not be afraid or shy. You know, and as Muslims, we take on our the cultural hue. I think we should fight against that mm -hmm. because, you know, I had a... Um, my son was doing his hifth, you know, a couple of years ago. He was maybe 14, 15. And there was a, a, a kid who came from uh, Uzbekistan and he just fresh off the boat and he would come and he would put his arm around the other other guys, you know, because that was normal for him coming from Uzbekistan. There was friends and the other, these are Muslim guys. Oh, that's gay. Like, what do you, you know? It's like, oh, dear. You know? Right. Because they grow up in this culture and they take on all of those assumptions. Okay. And I think that's a real problem because it's preventing people from having those, you know, the, the, the real. And the other thing I wanted to point out too, that things are not stable. We should be aware of that. If you go even in the West in the 19th century, you will find very similar correspondence between males, you know, uh, females too, but we have just less of it. Very kind of like by modern standards, very kind of mushy and deep and kind of emotional, right? The, the, professing their love for each other. You can also see pictures in Europe and America from the 19th century of men 
either two men or several posing like for pictures and they've got their arms around each other. They're sitting on each other's laps or kind of like in poses that for us today are clearly like, okay, they're a couple. They're not a couple. Trust me, like in those days, like in Victorian England, they would not be caught dead, like appearing as if they were yeah. gay, right? That, that was not interpreted that way. But from our cultural lens today, this looks very like, like, what are they doing? We right? really like, they were just closet, you know, whatever. And they were flouting that. No, they, they were just taking pictures and not expecting at all that, you know, I mean, anyone would interpret their behavior is gay, but it looks very intimate from our current, you know. It, it strikes me that we're much poorer today, you know, because, you know, there's sort of, you know, um, within the sort of LGBTQ circles and scholarship, there's this trend to try to look back in the past and say, oh, was such and such an author really gay? Oh, was such and such a work really about uh, homosexual desire and a lot of anachronism going on? And a lot of superimposing these modern sensibilities onto things that didn't exist in the past. And it seems like with our society that, you know, we have very much sexualized love. And I do blame, I think, music culture and entertainment culture for that. You know, you, you get the even the expression making love, you know, like did a lot of, I think, ideological work to conflate the two of love mm -hmm. and sex and, and take it away from kind of a much more expansive view of what love, love could be. Um, so we're almost poor, honestly, living today. Absolutely. I think we're emotionally poor for yeah. it. And, you know, it's either a, a relatively superficial relationship or it's a sexual one. Yeah. And a lot of sexual relationships are very superficial too. And a lot of people who are in these kind of whirlwind, you know, in and in one bed and out the next, they say like, there's no, there's no emotional connection here at all. Right. And, and this is really what we're looking for. And we're left, whether it's in the, you know, same sex community or like opposite sex, right? People out going from one to the next. And uh, after the physical thrill is over, they're, they're left emotionally desiccated, mm -hmm. right? And, and, I, and this is a big problem in, in the modern world where people lack connection. And I think we need to, to recognize that there is real suffering going on. And again, like in the LGBT community, right? There is real suffering going on because of, again, people's attitude, because of all the things we talked about before, but also because people are lonely and looking for connection and looking for relation and looking for love. And it's also with people in the, you know, heterosexual straight community to use these terms, the same, right? Outside of Muslim circles, people are lost in these urban jungles, right? right? Of, of, of profanity and promiscuity 